Hey, this is uh, Chet Chaser. Uh, I haven't made a video in a while, but uh, I figured I'd make a video about uh, soap shoes, my, uh, my forte. Um, so today I'm going to be making a video just about what you can expect from soap shoes if you happen to buy a pair. They're a little hard to come by, uh, mainly because they're pretty darn rare, but uh, if you do come by a pair, they'll be quite a bit expensive. But um, I, here I'm just going to give you some tips about what you can expect if you're going to buy a pair. Um, there's a couple videos, mainly by Ryan Johnsimus. Um, he was actually a pro back in the day, back when soap shoes were still around. You know, in like 98 to 2003, before they got bought out by Heelys. Anyways, um, with some of the shoes, you can expect some degrading of the soles. There's a couple models that will definitely have some defects to them. Um, I've got three pairs myself. I own a pair of Black Scabs, which by the way, that's a great band name. I've already checked, it's been taken. But um, yeah, so I own a pair of Black Scabs, two pairs of Cleans, one size 12 and one size 13. They're both that blue charcoal graphite kind of color. Um, and both of them have had issues. I've uh, I've looked to see what models have issues with them, you know, like defects, whether or not the sole will stay in place, whether it'll crumble or crack and stuff like that. And from what I've seen, um, scabs and cleans are going to be the ones that basically stay together and don't don't really uh, what do you call it? Don't really crumble or crack or fall apart on you uh, while you're using them. So for me, I'll show you the cleans real quick. Um, the cleans, they have had some issues. So right here, these are the size 12 cleans. They are kind of cracking. As you can see, there's a little bit of a cave in right there on the sole. It's uh, not too big, but it's definitely noticeable. And if you look right here on the beige part and also the black, it's uh, noticeably cracking. So these ones, by the way, the uh, sole on these is really slick. So if you were to land on the toe by accident, and not the grind plate right here, there's not the grind plate on there. Those are on my scabs. But um, if you, let's say you don't land on the grind plate, uh, you'll find that these actually do tend to just go across the rail pretty well. Um, you're not going to stop. If you do land on the toe on a pair of scabs, at least for mine, uh, you kind of you kind of come to a dead stop and almost fall if you don't really correct it at the right moment um, but yeah so with these these are cracked only once um, and after they stopped or after I stopped I noticed that it cracked I took them off immediately because I didn't want them to you know crack any more than they already had uh, so with these I think a really really great option is uh, gorilla glue the super glue variant uh, you could use other versions and all, but for me, the super glue is the best. All you gotta do is, you know, open it up a little bit, just like this, apply some, hold it down, make sure you have like a weight on top of it or something. Or if you're gonna set it down and set some weight on top of it, you know, like on a table or something like that, make sure you have some weight to keep it in place right here, and then put some weight on here uh, while you have it, uh, while you have the glue drying. Uh, so with these, yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty good shoes all in all, minus the, you know, minus the cracking. Oh, and also, right here, you can kind of see the, the tread on these is kind of bubbling. I don't know what's that, what that's about. I think the rubber is just kind of starting to go away. Um, it's got like a weird bubble pattern right there. Anyways, um, yeah, but these, these are great shoes, but minus the cracking. They got a cool looking airflow right there, so, you know, when you're running to get on or to a rail, They'll, uh, they'll definitely keep the ventilation going on your shoe. That way you won't have to deal with a lot of sweat going on while you're grinding a rail. Um, haven't had a crack on this one, but I, I, I see a couple cracks forming on this little beige part. Um, these, these ones in particular are just kind of for show right now until I can figure out what to do with them. Um, but here, I'll show you my other cleans. These are size 13 cleans. And um, as you can see right here, there's like a paper towel line. That's because the paper towel got uh, glued onto there and it hasn't really come off yet. Uh, I don't know if it will or not, but right here on the right shoe, you can see it's starting to crack right there. Um, actually, it's kind of gotten to the logo right there. 
you can see that whenever you just put a little pressure on the toe, it'll kind of come apart. It hasn't cracked all the way to the sole, just on the very bottom. So like on the inside, nothing's reached there. Um, that's just because I've been keeping vigilant about that. The second I see a crack, I take them off and then I just throw all my scabs with me. I always make sure I have two pairs just in case that happens. Um, and with these, you can see it's just the UHF original grind plate. Actually, let me show you. Um, I got a pair of unused ones right here. There's not too much going on here as far as like, I don't know, grooves or anything like that. It's just a, let me take that sticker off. It's just like a very, very basic grind plate. So, you know, no grooves, you gotta wear those in yourself. Um, no really like options for on the side for if you wanna do slower grinds or anything like that. But, you know, aside from that, it's a basic grind plate. Um, anyways, yeah, with these, you really gotta be careful. Um, in my experience, both cleans have cracked. Um, not a single one hasn't cracked, but they stay together if you stay vigilant about uh, where the cracks are forming and making sure they don't progress past a certain point on the sole. Um, by the way, these are pretty slick too. If you land on the toe on these, you can still keep going um, as long as you have enough momentum to keep you on course. Now with the other pair, oh yes, and one thing I almost forgot, the soles in these things suck. Not the soles, the inserts. These things suck. So I have a pair of never before used inserts that I got from my scabs and well, I hadn't even used these things, and just taking them out, it started to crumble. Yeah, that's not something you want going on in your shoe. Otherwise, it leaves a sticky residue inside of your shoe. That way, whenever you put your hand in there or put in another insert, it'll just it'll get the sticky residue on the insert, and it can possibly transfer to another shoe. So if you get the soles. I keep saying soles. If you get the inserts, definitely get them out of there because that's going to happen. And keep in mind, these ones are new ones. They had never been used and that's that's happening. If I just bent this right now, a new crack would form. Um, I just keep that as an example. Yeah, you can see the materials. It's just coming apart. These things are really old. So definitely, definitely keep these just away from your shoes. You can keep them as a memento or something like that, but that's eventually going to happen. Here I've got another one from one of the pairs of cleans. Let me move this. Um, as you can see, this one's together, but it's it's been used, so it's kind of kind of coming loose right there on the top fabric. On the bottom, it's not really crumbling like that, but this is just the right one. It's also supposed to say soap, but that's definitely kind of uh, gone. Um, you can see it, it, kind of the shape right there would have been there. Um, but yeah, it's not crumbling in the same way as that one but it's certainly coming apart. The other one in the size 13s, it eventually did start to crumble and get sticky residue all over the shoe. And the only thing that was remaining was this top piece right there here. I just threw that away because it was, it was just so gross. It was like brown, sticky, and it really did not smell good. So yeah, when it comes to soap shoe inserts, they were probably good back when they were still being made, but after a lot of aging, these things really don't stay very good, very in good condition. They tend to just crumble. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to get a pair of soap shoes, definitely, definitely get a pair of like Dr. Scholl's inserts. Um, Ryan Johnsonis has a video about this. Um, he just says, toss them and get a pair of Dr. Scholl's. Um, those are the ones that you get from Walmart whenever you step onto those machines that measure the pressure points of your feet and tell you you know, what sole you need. Those really work good because they have the, that cushion on the heel and depending on the one you get, they also have a good arch support. And that's really something you need when you land off of those really, really fast grind rails. After you land, it's like you come down on your feet and you land on that hard rubber on the bottom of the shoe. If you don't have a good cushion, and it'll, it'll start to wear on your feet. Um, so what I use is, I got my Pro 20 Black Heelys right here, is these Air Orthotics. These are made for running shoes, but they work very well for the soap shoes since you do kind of run in them, and also for the Heelys too. They have a really nice cushion right here, you can kind of see it. And also very nice gel on the bottom and some good arch support. I'm flat-footed, so I need that. So, you know, you want to get something like this 
for whenever you decide to toss those old inserts out and just use a new pair. Um, so with that said, I will show you my black scab soap shoes. They've got them right here. And with these, the scabs, I have no complaints. These things stay together quite well. As you can see, I got my UHF original grind plates on there. Um, there's not really too much wear or anything. There's a little bit of like chafing right there on the hatch. Yeah, it's got like two kind of cool uh, patches sewn on to both sides. That you can just expect because they're pretty old. Uh, these This kind of chafes just with age and also usage because you might land a little weird on a grind rail or a ledge or whenever you land off of your grind. Um, but aside from that, these are pretty good. Now with these soles, this part, um, these aren't very slick. They're very tough. They're very firm, but they aren't slick. So if you were to land on the toe, you either need to get off the grind rail and restart your grind, or you need to re-correct your foot stance on it. So say you land on the toe on the left shoe, if you're goofy and have your right foot in front of you, definitely as soon as you land and you notice, just move it. Move it right to the grind plate. Otherwise, it's not really going to work. Um, but yeah, with these shoes in great condition, only thing that's really going on with these is that slight chafe. But aside from that, these are pretty badass shoes. I just love how it says soap right there. That's a little white right there. Has the white logo right there and then the white soap brand logo right there. It's a, uh, it's a pretty good shoe. Um, and also if you do find a pair of Heelys, you know, Heelys like these, the shoe with the wheel on the bottom, you can find a pair of Heelys, the older ones, with a grind plate right in the middle. Now with these, you're going to find a grind plate in the middle that's not detachable. So with the soap shoes, you can see right here, it's a little tough to see because of the color, but um, you can see that it's a grind plate and it has a bolt down here and two bolts right here. These are known as uh, speed bolts, I think, and you take them out with this little soap shoe key. It's kind of an Allen wrench. You just put it in here, eventually you can loosen them, loosen them real quick. Oh man, if I can get it out of here. Okay, I cannot get it out of there. Should have brought a drill. Um, that works, but it's, uh, it's a little tough to get into the worn ones because this little groove kind of goes with usage. But yeah, um, you can take them out. But with the Soap Shoe Heelys, I'll show you right now, I got a pair of size 12 grind this you can see right here on the shoe grind this these shoes are pretty cool so right here they got this little patch right here it's a little wear you can see like a little loose on the lip right there um this one can kind of act as a braking system not to come to a full stop but you know slow yourself down you just got to angle the shoe a little bit to kind of slow yourself down where you're going down a grind rail or a ledge or something like that but right here, you can see it's got the wheel well for where you put the wheel, like this. And also got the heel brake too, that's, that's a staple of Heelys. And then the grind plate, got the little H logo for Heelys right in there. And it's got these two little tabs right here for um, braking if you're just going down a rail, you kind of put your shoe at an angle to kind of stop yourself. These obviously aren't detachable, they're just on there. Um, with mine, whenever I made just kind of my own grind rail at a family party, it's kind of funny, I took the top post off of a chain link fence that was that was kind of grindable, it was a little slick. Um, I kind of rigged it up with a couple of cinder blocks. I set them on top, or I set the post on top of a cinder block, and then one on the very end, and one on the very beginning, and one in the middle, and it worked quite well. Anyways, after that, they kind of came loose, so I eventually used my Gorilla Glue and just coated the edges and then stuck it right back on there, and it still works to this day. But one thing about it is on the very edge, you can kind of see it's coming loose a little bit. It's only if you pull, but that can always be reattached, you know? It's, uh, it's not like it's going to fall off and never be used again. And also one cool thing, you can kind of notice it's a pretty good parallel with these Heelys soap shoes and also the original pair of soap shoes. You see all the stitching around there, like all those small little columns, and you can see the stitching right here 
and then small little pattern on the bottom. It's a pretty neat shoe, to be honest. Really cool, rugged design. So with these, oh, also another issue I had with these was whenever I bought them, the wheel well is kind of loose. I could push it up, I could push it down, and whenever I had the wheel in there, it would kind of hit the rubber in there, and it would keep me from actually rolling. Um, so eventually I like pushed it down, added some Gorilla Glue in there, and it eventually worked. But all in all, these are pretty good shoes. Um, these are a little easier to come by than your normal soap shoes, um, and they're gonna cost you a little much more, not, not as much. Uh, no, they'll be a little cheaper than the soap shoes. Soap shoes, if, they're, if they've been used, they'll cost you probably about like 150 to 200, but if you can find a really good deal, they'll probably only cost you like 120. Um, so for that, yeah, that's the Healy soap shoes. And compare that to the original, not the original, but the basic design of the Healy's. Um, they're pretty good shoes. You know, just pretty basic. These ones are the basic pairs. There's some other cool ones like a MTV, Ocean Pacific, or uh, even Beavis and Butthead. Um, but yeah, with that, those are pretty good shoes. Oh, and also, the new tool for Heelys. This is the little hook that you put onto the wheel whenever it's in the wheel well to pull it out. Back before that, they just had the tool that had this kind of base and had this little had this little column right here. This is for taking out the plugs when you have them in there, just in case you just want to walk around or something like that. Um, they used to just have this, and it was a lot longer on this end, and you would just pry them out of there like you were taking out the plug. And whenever you did that, sh the freaking wheel would just shoot out like a bullet. But fortunately, you got a hook now, so you don't need to deal with that. Um, so basically with that, yeah, there's the Healy's tool and the soap shoe key. There actually was a cooler soap shoe key, it was like a rocket shape, and I'd imagine that'd be pretty easy to deal with, because rocket shape right here and two fins, you could probably use it like that. I just twist. Be a lot easier than this one. But you know, this one's pretty cool. It's a cool memento, it's a pretty rare one. Um, so yeah, with the soap shoe grind plates and all that, um, you got your UHF original that I already showed you. But, if you do manage to find a couple, you can find the BBKs. They were kind of like this one. They had a little bit more of an angle going on here. And also, right in the middle, they'd have this little soap shoe logo. It'd be this, just right in the middle. There'd be a hole for it, but the logo wasn't on every shoe. So if you put it on here, it'd just be a blank hole. But if you had a pair of, like, Cylons, you'd definitely see the logo, like, right around there. But with that said, I do have a pair of slow bros here in which you actually can see the soap shoe logo indention right there. These ones have a really cool system set up. These are, from what I remember, a beginner's grind plate. Um, they got these little grooves right here and this little groove right here to kind of maintain a different sort of speed. And also they have these little quick draw uh, holes for where you would put the top bolts. So instead of having to basically take it out of the holes, you could just put them at a certain, put the bolts at a certain setting, slide it right in there, and then just screw the bottom one in there. These ones are pretty cool. They're a little hard to come by though, because they, well, they come onto eBay very rarely, and uh, they're just hard to find because they're so old. But yeah, that's the slow bro, uh, what I like to call the quick draw slow bro grind plate. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have a soap shoe emblem on the bottom of my shoes, so that's just a blank hole. But, you know, it's still cool. Now, with that said, I would say you might want to stay away from getting certain models of soap shoes. From what I hear, Cylons and Boltars are the ones that tend to crack or even crumble. Cracking, you can kind of deal with if you're willing to put up with, you know, using a little glue on your shoe from time to time. And by the way, if you do find a crack in your shoe, I would suggest you immediately take them off and put on another pair of shoes until you can get to your glue and then gluing them right away. I don't care if you're on 120 degree pavement or just completely ice covered concrete, throw some glue on there. Like really, throw some glue on there. You're going you're gonna to want it. Otherwise, it's going to go to the shoe and it'll just keep cracking and probably even fall off on the part that it's grinding on. But, you know, aside from the cracks, um, there is crumbling of the soles that you'll need to deal with. 
So like, say this one started to crumble. It wouldn't just form a simple crack. Instead, the material would start to crumble into small pieces and eventually completely come off. Um, there's a video, I think, of Cylons that were being unboxed, and they were used probably, probably 10 steps into the person using them. They were just completely coming apart. This, started, this heel started to come off, and eventually it just spread to the entire shoe. Uh, if that happens, then I am afraid I don't have any real personal experience with it. But if that happens, then I would suggest you just take off the shoe and maybe try to apply some shoe goo or something like that, or Gorilla Glue if you'd prefer. But yeah, with that, I would say probably try to stay away from the Cylons and the bolt tires. Cylons, I'll put a picture right next to me here in a second. Um, Cylons, they have a BBK grind plate and then a little logo like this. Okay, I put it somewhere else. They have, oh, here it is. Yeah, they'll have that little groove for the logo. They'll be angled rather than, yeah, they'll have a little angle right here that you can kind of move your shoe to. These are the slow pros, by the way, not the BBKs. But they'll have that little emblem indention right there. Um, they'll have the logo right there where the indention is, and they'll have the logo plastered on the bottom of the shoe um, just all over. And they'll also have these little, like, I think they look like, the rebel sign from Star Wars. They'll have like two buttons on the bottom. Um, and also Boltars. I'll show a picture of that from Solid, Solid Grind's website. That's basically like a Wikipedia page for soap shoes and also uh, Heelys, the ones with the uh, grind plates on them. Um, they'll have, I'm not sure what they look like right now, but uh, they have a very distinct look. So from what I can tell, both those models have the same issue. They both crumble rather than crack. Um, and from what I hear, scabs and cleans. I can vouch for the scabs. They're a, they're a pretty cool design. They're a little bit of a basic shoe, but they stay together. The cleans, however, I've heard they they work, but from my experience of owning two pairs, they've both cracked on me, and they don't quite really hold up. Um, so I would recommend you probably don't buy a pair of that. You can if you want to, but you know, uh, buyer beware on those. Um, so on the rare occurrence you do find a soap shoe on eBay, I'd recommend maybe steer clear of Cylons or Boltars. You can collect them all you want. Um, if they've been used and you don't see a crack on the sole anywhere, probably buy them. But, you know, buyer beware on both those models. Um, so basically on those, that's about it. The, uh, the soles can crack. Keep in mind these are old shoes, so they're not going to be quite up to spec as modern day ones, like the Epic Grind shoe, that just got, uh, that just got released about a month and a half ago. So with that, um, those, uh, those will obviously stay together a lot more because heck they're being made this year. But, uh, yeah, with these, they're older shoes. So you gotta, you gotta be forewarned about it. Like keep, keep the warning in mind. They might crumble, they might crack. So you kind of have to expect a little degradation of the bottom of them or the top. But all in all, they should they should stay in place. Um, but yeah, that's about it. The soap shoes, pretty good shoes. Sadly, they aren't being made anymore. But if you can find yourself a pair, definitely get yourself a pair. And keep all these tips in mind. I do find that a good thing to do with your soap shoes is um, probably don't wear them everywhere. Definitely do not leave them on a hot car. I did that a couple times with my size 12 cleans, not the size 13s. Um, and I, I, I'm kind of feeling that they might have cracked because of that. Again, there's no way to really know, but uh, that probably wasn't a positive factor in their uh, usage. So with that, yeah, don't keep them in a hot car. Take care of them. Make sure you wax their surfaces too. You, maybe even a grind plates. So that really helps. Um, but yeah, I'd say with that, um, definitely keep all those tips in mind. Your soles can crack. Um, if you see it, you know, take them off. No, don't don't just try to uh, don't just try to tough it out. You know, they're they're pretty expensive, so you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna do what you can to keep them together. Anyways, um, I will see you in the next video. Next video, I'm gonna try to compare the Epic Grind shoes to the current day. Sorry, compare the current day Epic Grind shoes to the older soap shoes. Uh, there's a lot of parallels between the two, and 
The designs are pretty similar, but I see that as a good thing. That was a bad thing. Um, so whenever I get a pair of those, I'll definitely make like an unboxing video and then maybe a comparison video. And obviously, you know, show them, show their usage in the field. But uh, yeah, that's it. This is uh, Chet, Ch Chet Chaser of Punk Rock Pro signing out.